Hi, y'all. I am Lori. This is Kathy. Hello. We are from the Sewing Nook here in Amarillo, Texas. And if you are watching this video, you are going to make yourself a ruler bag that holds your rulers. I'm going to kind of explain how the ruler bag, what it's for, and how it works. It has pockets on either side. One side holds the rectangle rulers, one side holds the square rulers, and then you have the little pockets here in the middle for the extra little rulers. Each pocket holds its own corresponding ruler, so they're easy to get in and out and protect. And once you have it created the way the pockets are made, they're at different levels, so when you slide the ruler down in, they actually do nestle into each other when you're carrying it, and so that makes it nice. When I'm at home and I'm using the rulers, I just hang the bag like this with the pockets on the outside so they're easy to get to. And then when you're going to take it to class, you just fold it up and carry it like this. And then open it up when you get to class to use your rulers. Now what we're going to do is go through the steps. You'll have downloaded the pattern. If you want to print the pattern off, you can, but it is a lot of pages, like 30-something pages, because I have real big pictures and all for you, and so I would probably just maybe download it and then have it on your computer, your phone, your tablet, and follow the steps. My suggestion is you read through the pattern first once you get it. Don't get scared when you get to the steps that aren't making sense. Um, then watch the video and I will explain those steps that are a little bit tricky and then once you start making the bag and it starts coming together everything makes sense and there was an aha moment in each of my classes when it starts making sense and why I'm doing the certain steps. So we're going to get started and we're ready to get started. The pattern is kind of divided up into two sections. You're going to have the prep work that you're going to have to do first, and then the actual construction of putting the bag together. So I'm going to start kind of just going over the prep work with you. On page one in your pattern, that's your supplies, everything that you need. Page two are just some kind of notes that I wrote down to kind of to try to explain some of the steps. Then page three and page four, that's when you're going to start cutting everything out. You're going to cut out your interfacing, and then you're going to have the main fabric, which is the outside of the bag, the lining of the bag down here, um, the inside part, and then a couple of the pockets. And then your coordinating fabric is going to be your other two pockets and the binding down there. So you have two different types of fabric. And page three and page four are explaining the sizes that you cut those out. I recommend as you're cutting everything out, label them with sticky notes, tape, something. And just label them the size of the pocket. So when you're cutting the six by six pocket, label it six by six. And then, and same thing for the interfacing. Now on page five in your pattern, it's explaining the outside of the bag. The outside of the bag is quilted. And so you'll, um, you can spray like the back side of your main outside piece of fabric with 505, stick it to your batting, and then quilt it however you like. If you want to do linear quilting, an all over pattern, however you want. Now, if you do want to embellish your bag, the outside, maybe add an embroidery design, do your name, a monogram, something like that, I would do that now. So you have your batting after you've quilted it. I would put some stabilizers, some tear away or something, and you could embroider on both sides or just one side. It's going to, you'll have a long piece like this. It's gonna hang, oh, you know, like this. So you'd want it going this direction. And remember, you will have up here at the top, you will have a half inch seam allowance. So don't come too far up. So just embroider it here in the middle. If you wanna add your name, because that's really cute. So that's the outside of the bag. Then on page six, it's talking about the, what I'm calling the lining of the bag. This is the inside piece that has the stiffener in it that all your pockets are going to start being built on. You have two options. The first option is using a product called Temtex. This is just a real stiff, thick interfacing stabilizer maybe. And, but it's not fusible. So what I did is I took my lining piece. You can bond like steam a seam, wonder under some kind of fusible web onto the back of your lining piece. 
peel that paper away and then bond that to your Timtex. Okay? So that's one way of doing it if you have access to Timtex. If you don't, another product that you could use is the Flex Foam. And there is a Flex Foam that has one side that is fusible. So you could just take that and bond the wrong side of your lining piece to that flex foam and press that really well. Now I am going to make a note. If you are going to use the flex foam, it is a little bit thicker than the Timtex. So the very last step is where you bind the edges. So if you're using the flex foam, you might want to cut your binding just a little bit wider. I am not an expert on binding, so in the pattern I just tell you to bind the edges. Some people, when you're cutting out your binding, I have a note that you're going to bind it however you like. So some people like cutting it two and a quarter inches wide binding. Some people like cutting two and a half inches wide. If you're going to cut it two and a quarter inches and you're using the flex foam, I might cut it maybe two and three eighths just to give you a little bit more to wrap around the thickness of the flex foam. Okay? Then on page, oh, one more note, go back to the lining. If you want to add a closure at the top, this is the lining, okay, so this is the inside of your bag, so when you close it up, if you want to add a closure, you could do that. You could sew on some little Velcro strips here. Um, remember, you are going to have a half inch seam allowance up here at the top, and then the first pocket is going to lay here at um, an inch and a half down. So you want your closure right up in here, a piece of Velcro, a snap, whatever you want. Um, I didn't on any of mine, but some people might want to do that. So you would want to do that at this step after you've bonded your fabric to your stiffener piece. Then on page seven and eight, those instructions are pretty, I think, self-explanatory. You're ironing on the interfacing and everything. And then um, one note, when we, the way this is made, each pocket, your 6x6, six 8x8, by 6x8, six by six by and 8x10 eight are individual pockets. What I am calling the fours pocket, okay, it's the one long piece. And it's going to have the pocket for the 4x4 four four on one side and the 4x6 on the other side. So this is called the fours pocket. And you're going to have a outside piece that your embroidery is done on and a lining piece and but as in the pattern i'm going to refer refer to this as the fours pocket and when it's folded up you have the pocket on either side this will make sense i promise once we get going it does <laughs> now on page nine that's where you're going to start doing the embroidery these other pockets it's one piece that is folded in half and when you start doing the embroidery you're going to mark a half inch down from the top, the fold, and then six inches from your edge, and that's going to be the center for your embroidery designs. You're going to just use numbers off of your embroidery machine. I have a note. You want to size them so that they are about 20 millimeters tall, so that they will fit within this area. And then when you go to embroider it, make sure you open the pocket up so that you can hoop it so you're not hooping right on the edge you have a bigger piece that you can get in your hoop so that's explained on page nine when you get to your fours pocket you have the two pieces here right okay? you're going to take and baste put them right sides together baste a stitch a quarter of an inch on one side okay right? then you'll be able to open that up and embroider that side then you'll take that basting stitch out and then go ahead and sew the quarter inch seam on the other side. So this won't be a basting stitch, this will be sewn. And then open that up so that you can embroider the other side. So I'm basting it along this first edge just simply so that you can open it up so you have enough room to hoop. You'll take that basting stitch out, then you'll sew the other side with a seam. That one's gonna stay in you'll open it up and then do the embroidery on that side. And then once you've done all your embroidery, no, you still have to do the little pocket. For the little pocket, it's on page 12. You're just sewing it right sides together, leave an opening, turn it right side out, and you're good. So then at that step, you are done with your prep work 
and we're going to go on and start explaining the construction. Okay, you've got your prep work done. Now we're ready to start doing the construction. What we're going to be doing while we're doing this video, we're actually making a bag. So I'm going to show you a couple of steps. We're going to cut, go do, sew that, come back. So you may have a couple of breaks in this video um, where you can tell we're starting and stopping. So we're on to the construction, page 13. We're going to do the inside pocket first, the little bitty for your little rulers. This is sewn onto the fours pocket. Okay. Open this up. We've basted this side. You've done your embroidery. You've taken those basting stitches out. You've sewn this seam. You've done your embroidery. And then leave that seam in, but you open it up. Open it up. Open it up. <laughs> when you sew the pocket down. And you, you can measure 11 and a quarter inches down. It says in the pattern, find the center of your pocket and line those marks up. And then just stitch the two long sides. I would definitely maybe back stitch really well at the beginning and end of each side. So because you are going to be sliding those rulers in and out and you want that to be pretty secure. So that you your, recommend the walking foot when doing all this? You can either do the walking foot here or I like the edge stitch foot. The edge stitch foot's my favorite foot. So when you're sewing that pocket on, I like the edge stitch foot. After that, once you've sewn this pocket on, I would change to your walking foot. If you have a walking foot, it's going to help put all these pockets together and keep everything lined up and all. So that's that pocket. You can lay that to the side. Then you're going to take on page 14, you're taking that lining piece okay that has either the Timtex or the um, flex foam iron to it fused to it you're going to measure down on both sides both ends inch and a half and mark that with the fabric marker then we're going to start with your bigger rulers pockets you'll lay the 8 by 10 on one side your 8 by 8 on the other side and line up the fold with that mark that you've drawn on your lining. Now, what we have to do, you cannot just sew this down, okay? And this will make sense. If you just start sewing these pockets down, you're sewing closed those pockets that are underneath there as we start building. So what we're going to do on each pocket, we are flipping the top piece out of the way. And then, and I would... On the pattern, I do say, I have a note, when I start saying clip, that means use your wonder clips. Do not take a pair of scissors and clip into your fabric. So I would probably maybe go ahead and clip here at the top edge to hold that piece onto your fold. Then flip that piece out of the way. This is your 8 by 10 pocket I'm working here. So take your, it's actually 8 and a half by 10 and a half, but I have just done the without the halves to make it easier. Lay your pocket, your ruler on that pocket, butt it up against the top, okay? Maybe down, maybe a little bit eighth of an inch away from that fold so that they will tuck down in the pocket a little bit. So come down about an eighth of an inch from that fold and then you're going to mark with your fabric marker along the bottom of the ruler. And then we're going to take that and sew that down. You are not sewing this top that has your embroidery and the interfacing on. You are just stitching the lining of the pocket down to that bottom piece. Then you'll do the same thing on your other side for your 8x8 ruler. Flip it out, tuck your ruler up in there, and stitch those. Okay, okay so you went and we've stitched the lining of that pocket onto the lining with your Timtex or your Flex Foam. One thing about going back to the Timtex and the Flex Foam, if you can find the Timtex, it's a little bit stiffer, a little bit thinner, and it is a little bit easier to work with. Um, the Flex Foam is kind of the next best thing. So this piece has the Flex Foam in it, and so it is a little bit thicker. Now what we're doing are the next two pockets. So you're going to measure down on the 8x8 and the 8x10 pocket an inch then you're going to take your next set of pockets the 6x6 and the 6x8 line the fold up with that mark and then clip with your wonder clips here at the top you might go ahead and clip in the middle also and here I'm clipping through everything the whole pocket then you're going to flip that top part of your pocket out of the way 
slide your ruler up in there and then mark the bottom edge. Same thing on the other pocket, flip it over, out of the way, slide your six by six ruler up in there and mark the bottom of it and then you're gonna stitch. Now, when you go to stitch this, do not stitch through everything because if you do, that closes up that bigger pocket up underneath there and you're not gonna be able to slide that ruler, that larger ruler underneath there. So when you go to stitch this, you flipped the top pieces out of the way. You are just gonna get a hold, see, of the pieces that aren't sewn. That piece is down. This is the lining of your bottom pocket, your eight by eight pocket, stitched to that lining of the bag. Then you're just getting a hold of these two pieces. So it's the top piece of the pocket that's underneath, this is the confusing part. So you're just getting a hold of the top piece of that bottom pocket that has the interfacing, then the lining of this next pocket and you're just stitching through those two layers. When you get to your machine, you're going to take this and you're going to flip this all out of your way so that you are just stitching through those two layers. Got it? We're gonna go back and do that. Okay, we're back. We stitched through, again, just the top piece of that bottom pocket and then the bottom piece of the pocket that's on top. And then you can flip that top piece back down. This is where it gets exciting because you can take your ruler and you can slide it down in there and make sure it's gonna fit and check it. And then now we're on to the next layer, which is the fours pocket. You're going to lay this down. You have the one side that has the seam stitched. You're going to, and mine, it's on the four by four. So I'm laying that on top of the six by six pocket with the seam right on top of that line. Oh, we did measure down again another inch from this bottom pocket here, the six by six pocket measure down on both of them, the one inch and mark. Then you're lining up that seam on top of there now, over on this other side, this is the side that we basted first and now it's loose because we took that basting stitch out. When you lay your ruler up in here to mark where you're gonna sew, allow for that quarter inch seam that we're gonna take again here in a minute. So don't slide your ruler all the way up here to the top of that um, raw edge come down a little bit, allow for that quarter inch seam that we're gonna take here in a minute. Then you will flip this whole pot. Well, go ahead, I would probably here at this side, go ahead and clip that edge where the seam is stitched. Then flip this top piece back out of the way and you'll slide your four by four ruler up in here mark okay the bottom of that lay your other ruler this is the four by six on mine come down that quarter of an inch from the raw edge mark the bottom of that then again we are just going to be stitching through the two layers so take the top piece where you've marked and then our, this is the lining sorry this is the bottom of your fours pocket the lining piece and then you're picking up the top piece of your six pockets and you're just going to be stitching through those. You could do one at a time. Go ahead and clip, pick those two layers up, clip on either side. Now this gets a little tricky because you're going to have to manipulate this. This one, you could go ahead and just flip this when you go to your sewing machine, flip that out of the way and stitch that down. Once you have that sewn, then for your other side over here, you're going to be clipping this one and you're gonna have to kind of take it to your machine and kind of flip it down like this maybe and then stitch it. So it's a little bulky and it's a little kind of cumbersome when you get to your machine, but just make sure you are just stitching through these two layers. Okay, we're gonna go do that. Okay, we got that part done. Yay! I'm making Kathy do the stitching, so she had to go and manipulate this into the machine. <laughs> and it wasn't real easy, you but gotta, I did it. You gotta just kind of work with it and just make sure you're sewing through the two layers. Now, once, you, once you've done that, you're going to have this, okay? So you just come back, get on a flat surface, start laying your pockets out, get them straightened up, and work with it. And we just did that, and I just messed it all up. Mm -hmm. 
and you'll get them all not well you and you really don't have to mess with it. you can just for your pleasure you can make sure that they are going to line back up but we're about to mess it up again so make sure they're all laying here nice and pretty and you can kind of tug on each end of the pocket to get them to lay flat but now what we've got to do next step and this is on page we've gotten to page 23 of your instructions now we've got to sew this back together this pocket so you're going to take it you have your right side of your outside the right side of your lining you got to take it and basically kind of twist it like this and get right sides to right sides so you have your bag kind of all flopping down here at the bottom and you can clip those edges and then you're going to be stitching gotta get a clip mm -hmm. and then you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam and sew that together once you've done that once you've sewn this quarter inch seam that's pretty much the the tricky parts of the pattern the rest of the instructions i think are pretty self-explanatory you'll sew the handles sew the um, batting piece together and then you're going to bind it when the last step is the binding when you go to bind it you're just going to be binding the two long edges because this is going to be sewn shut take the ends of your strip that you're using as your binding tuck under a little bit maybe half an inch press that down um, press your binding in half and then you can either do it from this side stitch it flip it over or do it from this side flip it over but line up that folded edge on the edge of your bind on the edge of your bag there so that it will be finished off on all four edges and you're done once you get that done your bag will be complete and you'll be able to store your rulers and all nice and safe and protected and easy access for them so we just want to thank you kathy and i want to say thank you for purchasing the pattern and watching the video and i hope you enjoy it i hope you um have fun making it it is a little tedious but it is a fun project and it's exciting once the pop the rulers start fitting into your pockets you get excited and I want to see pictures so I want to see fabrics that you're using um, any embellishments that you do on the outside you do your embroidery your monogram your name I want to see that so post pictures when you get them done thank you thank you bye bye